Not long ago, I decided to ditch the corporate grind to pursue my passions for traveling and the great outdoors. So I sold everything, moved into a trailer full time, and now I'm fishing my way across the entire country. There we go. Fish out. Look at that. You're watching Field Trips with Robert Field. That was insane. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Field Trips vlog. So if you're new to my channel and you don't know me, I moved into this toy hauler full time. I've got no home base and I am currently kayaking, fishing, filming, and just exploring my way through all 49 states that I can drive to over the next four to five years. So every single Tuesday I put out a fishing episode at 6 p.m. Eastern and then some Thursdays I drop kind of bonus episodes and I may be anything from hiking to sightseeing, checking out national monuments, area, you know, kind of attractions, anything that I can kind of find along the way and also some kind of behind the scenes of what RV life, what living in this camper full time is really like and that's what this episode is so in this episode i'm going to show you what my internet solutions are for being on the road living in this toy hauler full time so for those of you that are just here for that you search for rv internet solutions you don't care about me you don't know me that's totally fine i get it i understand you're in a hurry so i'm going to real quickly run you through my kind of fourfold approach for staying connected when i'm on the road when i'm off the grid when i'm out in the sticks and then for those of you that want to see the installs and a little bit more uh, in depth of the reasoning for this stuff, stay tuned and I'll get through that later. So uh, the four things that I use is this, a Verizon Jetpack hotspot. This keeps me connected, but you got to pay for data. Then I also use my cell phone, my iPhone as a hotspot. This is AT&T service. So between the two, one of the two should work. Then I use a WeBoost cell phone booster to boost the signal of both of those when I'm really off the grid. And then finally, I use a Wi-Fi Ranger Wi-Fi booster to pick up and piggyback off some Wi-Fi, even if it's not right next to my camper. So those are the four things I use. If that's all you wanted to know, you want to go look into them on your own, more power to you. Appreciate you stopping by. If you're into fishing, or even if you're not, if you're into traveling, go ahead and subscribe. Check out the channel. You might be surprised. You might dig my stuff, or you might not. For those of you that want to know a little more in depth about what I use, uh, why I'm using this stuff, the ups and downs of each of these solutions, stick around. I'm getting into that right now. So, back to the Verizon Jetpack. Really cheap to get the unit. It's basically just a setup fee. The unit itself does not cost much at all. What you're paying for is the data. So with the Verizon plan, you basically pay X amount of dollars a month for X amount of gigabytes of data per month. And then of course, overage charges apply. Now I'm currently paying for eight gigabytes a month, which sounds like a lot. It's not. Really, I cannot rely on this thing to get me through a month of internet usage especially if I'm uploading episodes, which I'm always uploading episodes. So this is always kind of like my plan C. This is uh, what my last resort when I just got to get internet and AT&T service for my cell phone is terrible. Verizon is super reliable all across the country. There's only been a couple places so far where it's a little spotty. So this is kind of my backup plan. The jetpack is when I got to get an episode up for you guys. I'm out of time. I don't have time to run to Starbucks or something. I pop this guy on and get what I need done. For the AT&T hotspot on my cell phone, I mean, kind of similar thing, you know, it, I've got unlimited data, but once it hits a certain amount, they choke it, they slow it down. So again, not ideal, but if I need to rely on cell service, I've got two options, and so far, everywhere I've been, either Verizon or AT&T has worked fine. So between these two, I'm kind of covered when it comes to cell service. So to get these things online, I use a WeBoost cell phone booster. It's basically an antenna that goes on the roof to a smaller antenna in here, and that gathers the cell signal from the cell tower, even if it's not close, transmits it to this smaller antenna in here, which I'm gonna show you in a minute, and that boosts the signal to each of these devices. It really kind of helps me when I'm not close to a cell tower, make sure I stay connected. And now lastly, and I'm doing this last, even though this is really the first thing that I wanna be using, I use a Wi-Fi Ranger Wi-Fi booster up on the roof. Again, gonna show you that install in a minute. And that allows me to capture Wi-Fi signals that aren't right next to my trailer. Now it's kinda still, jury's still out on how far I can really grab these, but the concept being that it's super useful in certain situations. Like if I'm anywhere near a McDonald's or a Starbucks or any of the number of growing establishments that offer free Wi-Fi, I can kind of piggyback off their signal, even if I'm like a mile away. 
Now, where it's even more useful and more prevalent is most campgrounds have Wi-Fi, but usually the router is like up in the main office or maybe in a couple spots around the park. But depending on where your spot is and you never really end up, know where you're gonna end up, you may be too far from that to capture from your trailer. And so when I first moved into this thing, I found myself like sitting up at a, you know, outside of an RV park office trying to get my work done really miserable. I want to be in the comfort of my own home. So with this Wi-Fi Ranger so far, I've been able to pick up the Wi-Fi no matter where it's located in every campground that I've been at. So even just that little bit of convenience made the purchase worth it. But again, beyond that, piggybacking off of Starbucks or McDonald's or wherever, super reliable. And again, those Wi-Fi, that's free. So that's always my plan A with the two cell options as kind of my plan B in a pinch. So now let's cut over and I'll show you how we installed the WeBoost cell phone booster and the Wi-Fi Ranger Wi-Fi booster. So we got back from catfishing late last night. Now I'm here, Mike Plaint is gonna help me install the Wi-Fi Ranger Wi-Fi booster antenna on the roof of my trailer, as well as the WeBoost cell phone booster. And doing them at the same time really helps a lot. We gotta drill a hole through the roof to run these wires and this way we can just drill one hole, run both wires through it hopefully make it for a much cleaner install and kind of knock both these out at one time. And between these two, I should have my internet solutions pretty well set no matter where I am, no matter how far on the sticks I journey to. You see my little X marks the spot? I see it, yeah. I, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where we need to drill the hole. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I, um, I kind of give my, I didn't know how thick the cabinet was, so I called it an inch, just figuring, I know it's not that thick, but I figure I'd rather go a little too far in than, yeah. you know. The edge of the cabinet? Like the edge. thickness of the cabinet to, to how? From the wall or from, from? Yeah, well, you know, going this way, we gotta yeah. go through. I don't the know how thick. The thickness of the cabinet? It's probably not much, huh? Yeah, it's like an eighth of an inch. All right, well, so we're, we're gonna run these wires through. We just did the measurements. Mike just double checked, kind of spot checked, make sure we're good, but. Basically, we're going to come in here. So both boosters have like a little box, kind of like a, looks like a router kind of deal. Um, but it's got to mount somewhere. They said that mounting it inside a cabinet is perfect, kind of keep it out of the way so it's clean. You're not sitting there staring at it. So we're going to drill through the roof, to come in right here, we'll mount those boxes here, and then we're going to drill a hole through this cabinet to come over here, and this is where we'll get to the power source. This is made for the, the TV bracket here. I don't watch TV, so I don't have a TV. Um, but basically, we're going to drill a hole through here to bring the power cable out and plug it in here. So we got power, and all you'll see inside my trailer is this little power cable going here into a nice grommet here so it looks clean. And then uh, all the boxes and wires and everything will be hidden in here inside my pantry. Should be a pretty slick setup. We'll see. We will see. Like that, you know? Yep. And then... Um, yeah, then they can just go straight in. Yeah, and then this cable's gonna be here so you could even just put that in line and have both cables right there together. Yep. And, come, and then just zip tie them together yeah, maybe once or maybe twice. Even like like that so they'll kind of converge come together, in the middle. Be, yeah. I like that. So you got the pencil, right? Yeah. So let's let's line this up. Right there. Alright, so that's, good. that's twelve. You go ahead and mark those holes and that way you can just put a bead of that in. Yep. And we'll lay it right back down in the same spot. Okay. And screw it down. Yeah. Now they won't interfere with each other, will they? Sure hope not. No. 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 Okay. They're doing different things. Okay. So what are we drilling first? The hole? Yeah, we gotta drill the hole, make yeah. sure. Yeah, kosher. before we drill this. Yeah. Now, I didn't come up here and check your measurements here, so well, remember I eyeball I had to eyeball it from the Well here, eyeball it now. We said it was thirty four, five, thirty six. Yeah, that's what I did was I did thirty eight by four. Yeah. Remember we said the wall was two inches and then two inches inside of it. That's so we'll be two inches in, two inches in. Yep. Again, that's not what I I I screwed it up. No, I just got right. lucky. It worked <laughs> worked out. Hold on a sec. You're not if if you hit a wire, you're not gonna die, are you? Should we unplug it or something? I don't think I don't no. see why there would be a wire there and we didn't do it when I did that, but I don't have it now. <laughs> <laughs> you done run her off now. Yeah. Are we ready? Yeah. Moment of truth. I see some insulation. Yep, that's just like it looked on the other side. First yeah. hole is drilled. We got another layer of, basically there's the roof 
then a gap with insulation, and then the ceiling. Still got to go through the ceiling. But we didn't hit any wires, didn't hit anything horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Fall up the ladder, God. Are you videoing? Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, you're in it now. Right. <laughs> it's long enough. If it's not, we could go inside and finish it if you got through yeah, some of it. It went through. It went through, yeah. I guess that's in the cabinet. cabinet we're working I guess in. that's in the cabinet. We go inside to the left of the fridge. There's a yeah, look, look my that pantry. Overhead cabinet. Yeah. And then see if you see the screwdriver in there. You see a big gaping hole? You see it? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Perfect. Got it. All right, so now we're gonna run the two wires, one from each booster, through this yeah. hole. We've got a grommet that we're gonna use to cover up most of the hole. And then I'm using non-self-leveling, non-leveling die core to seal this, uh, the, all these roofs on all these campers and toy haulers are notorious for leaking. We want to make sure it doesn't leak. It's the same stuff I used in the solar panel, Zamp solar panel install. If you saw that video, um, works really well. It's almost like a putty, like a really thick kind of like caulk kind of substance. So we're gonna use that to really make sure this thing doesn't leak. We've got Mike's wife, Monica, assisting down there, pulling in all the excess wire. A little more. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, that slips on. That we can do it on after. Yeah. Yep. Oh, good. that's it. That's good. Uh, one more. So this is the Wi-Fi booster Wi-Fi Ranger right here. And this is the Wii Boost cell signal booster. Rock solid. This? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, so we got the die core down beneath all the screw holes, got the Wii Boost cell booster, the Wi-Fi Ranger Wi-Fi booster. These are now installed. We got the wires running through here. We use this grommet. This came with the Wii Boost booster, but uh, Mike had to kind of waller it out, make the hole bigger so we can get both wires through there. But this should make for a really clean, really clean install. It's a three quarter inch hole. We're using these self sealing roofing screws. It's got a little kind of rubber grommet built into it just for an added layer of protection and waterproofing. It'd be really nice if we had some loom. Some what? Wire loom. Put it in a piece of loom. Oh, yeah, don't, uh, don't worry about that. In the video of the solar panel install, we were joking about, uh, he even said something about like, what, you know, we gotta make sure it looks good. And I was like, for who? He was like, well, you know, if you have like a girl over, I was like, man, if she I got a girl over, <laughs> she's checking out my roof. This is, that's a girl I don't want anything to do yeah. with. Like, she's yeah. gonna, he, he, and in the video, he's like, Joe, he's like, before I go downstairs, I gotta go upstairs, check your roof. <laughs> Crazy. All right, this is going to go on here. And then this is going to stick through there like that. Make sure you get a lot in here. Okay. So that's, that's in the, the hole too or kind of No, just, just around it, but yeah. that side. Because it's, um, water's running down this way. Yep. Oh, God. I'm just okay. gonna put some extra, yeah, die core. And that's pretty much good to go. I'm gonna add extra die core on top of the grommet here. Make sure, I mean, that's the big hole. That's what we gotta be careful of. And I'm probably gonna go ahead and just put some extra on here. Just can't hurt. I've opened the tube, gotta use it. And you can see it's the same stuff the manufacturer used to seal all the skylights and everything. And they put a pretty good layer on there. So just gonna kind of follow their lead. All right, got it all mounted. Got it all sealed up with the die core. It's good to go. Now we just gotta go inside, mount these boxes on the wall, run the power, just kinda make sure it's clean. Should be able to get internet pretty much no matter where I find myself in the country. All right guys, so we've got both boosters installed. You can see here where the power runs through. We drilled a hole through the cabinet. Got a nice grommet to keep that clean. Then we've got this smaller Wii Boost antenna. Basically there's the big antenna on top that gathers the signal from the cell tower, even if it's a long ways off. Runs it down here and then this smaller one transmits that signal to the cell devices inside the trailer. I tried to get kind of an adhesive solution to stick the bottom of this antenna to the side of my cabinet, 
but it doesn't work. The bottom's kind of like a rubbery type of material, I'm assuming so it doesn't slide, so I can't get any adhesive to stick to it. So I just used some of these adhesive kind of zip tie holders to hold up the cord, and that seems to hold up the antenna in place just fine. And then in here, in my pantry, you can find both boosters. You can see in here, I've got both the boosters mounted onto the inside wall of the cabinet. Both came with mounting hardware, so that was an absolute breeze sticking those up there. I've got the power strip in here that we're running through the cabinet to power both the units. And then I'm using Night Eyes gear ties to kind of corral some of these cables. There's a lot of extra cabling. The Night Eyes gear ties keep them organized. Then I used a couple more of these adhe adhesive zip tie holders to kind of hang those up on the wall, get them off the bottom. So all in all, I mean, there's a lot of cable in here, but it's nice and hidden inside my pantry. And once I put all this stuff back in place, you really can't even see that they're back there. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for this short episode of the Field Trips vlog. That's how I make sure I stay connected with the world during my travels across the country. Uh, if you have any questions on these installs or how this stuff's working or if you have any suggestions for other solutions if you're wondering how i get power when i'm off the grid i did a video installing some zamp solar panels on the roof if you want to see that check it out there's a link in the description i'll also pop a link up in this corner but beyond that guys i want to know what kind of stuff you want to see if you want me to do a video on just kind of what rv life is like in general what my routine like or what it's like kind of breaking down, getting ready to move spots, and then unloading uh, at the new spot. If you want to hear about what it's like pulling the RV or what it's like not having a dishwasher or laundry facilities, or if you just want to know how I plan my route, how I'm planning my schedule across the country, this is a four to five year journey going through every state. My plan is to average a month in each state. So 49 states is a little over four years. I'll probably spend a full summer in Alaska when I get done. And then after that, who knows if I'm still enjoying it, maybe I'll hit Canada. But anything you guys want to know about RV life, living in a trailer full time, let me know. I'll put a video out for it. Uh, I'd love to share this journey with you, give you guys kind of a behind the scenes look of what my life is like when I'm not on the water. So you guys let me know. Comment below. I reply to every single comment. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what you'd like to see. And I promise you, you will see it. Till next time, guys, I will catch you on the next field trip. We are heading from here to Virginia.